You can bet your bottom dollar. Great programming coming up next on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Stand by. Hold on. Talk at its finest, coming up next on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. In about two minutes, stand by. guys are talking about stand by a great show coming up next on the Stewart media and entertainment network in about 30 seconds stand by don't go away stop 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 If they're talking about it at the barbershop, we're talking about it here on SME. Great show coming up in about 30 seconds. Don't go away. Stand by. It's time. Sit back, relax, and enjoy another great product on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Yeah! Mic check, mic check. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Marcus Harper, and you are listening to the Marcus Harper Podcast. Yes. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> yes. Now. Before we get started, I got to take a moment and thank God, because without him, there is no me. Believe it. All right. (laughs) Now that we got that out of the way, (laughs) how are you, good people? (laughs) You are, Are you doing okay? I hope everyone is doing all right. Life is good. (laughs) I got no time for the other games. Let's get straight to it. (laughs) You see the cover art. You see the title of this week's episode. And I want to talk Twitter with you just for one second. For those of you on Twitter, hit me up. Find me on Twitter at Splash Brother. All one word, capital S on Splash, capital B on Brother. And we are coming off a great, great NBA Finals. One for the history books for sure. And I started preferencing the games right around games five, game six. I think it was game six and game seven. I started preferencing the games with just one tweet. No excuses. <laughs> no excuses started to become a lot of rhetoric and and all these things going on so game six and game seven follow me on twitter hit me up look me up find me out there 
Um, I'll definitely throw you a follow back if you follow me for sure. But I wanted to put that out there. <laughs> Had to preference the games with no excuses. Uh, LeBron James, <laughs> before we get to that. And I want to preference the entire episode by saying this. The NBA, and I hope everybody hears me clearly. The NBA, the National Basketball Association, is not rigged. <laughs> it isn't. NBA is a lot of things. A lot of things. But to predetermine the outcomes of games, that's that's a, that's a reach. You have to prove it to me. If you're going to say that, you got to prove it to me. Because <laughs> I, I wouldn't waste my time watching games if they were rigged like that. Uh, but yes, <laughs> with that being said, no excuses will be made. And to the victor goes to spoils. And I want to talk LeBron James. We got to talk LeBron James. Now that 24 has retired, LeBron James is the smartest basketball player in the NBA. (laughs) Let's put that to bed early. Never mind the fact that he's built like a Mack truck. We'll stick that to the side right now. His IQ is a 99. And Braun, just like Kobe, hear me out when I say this, he really do be preaching. (laughs) We just don't listen. We just don't pay attention to what he says. And I don't know if it's because he's not the most articulate person in the world. That shouldn't have anything to do with it. But Braun really do be preaching. And I got some audio clips for you to present as evidence. (laughs) One thing I'll say about LeBron James is he is very, very knowledgeable about the game of basketball. His approach is everything he is very knowledgeable self-aware where what's going on around him and since we renamed the og quote of the week the muhammad ali og quote of the week we are going to sprinkle in quotes from lebron james (laughs) and this is going to become the king's speech he deserves the props so the propers he shall get and one of the favorite one of my favorite quotes from lebron james it was one year before U.S. mini camp, one of the training camps, getting ready to go to the Olympics, and they're sitting in there, and Coach K comes in, and he's about to give him the speech. And LeBron jumps up and says to everybody in the room, and it's a lot of ball players in the room, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, Carmelo Anthony, a lot of big alpha males in the room. LeBron James jumps up and says, hey, we will not be, we will be a no-excuse basketball team. Yes, period. We will be a no-excuse basketball team. No excuses will be made at the end of this. Before we get started, let's go ahead and get that out of the way. (laughs) That was his quote. No excuses. And like I said, to the victor goes to spoil. So with all of that being said, I want to congratulate LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Absolutely. (laughs) Hand clap. (laughs) Standing Obey. Congratulations to the city of Cleveland, to everybody in Northeast Ohio. Well, well earned to the entire state, to everybody who supports the Cavs. Seriously, all the true Cavs fans out there, propers to y'all. King James, BKA Lotto, as he's known around the show, has returned to the top of the mountain. He has grabbed the gold trophy. He has planted his flag, and the view is oh so sweet at the top. (laughs) They are the world champs. Congratulations to the Cleveland Cavs, champions of the world, Craig. (laughs) So seriously, congrats to them. Enjoy it. Very, very well earned. Down three games to one against the defending champs against the best regular season team in NBA history, 73 wins. And to come back and win it all, yes, that was history in itself. Very, very impressive. (laughs) I want to make sure we get that clear. Congratulations to them. And next segment, we're going to talk the series. We're going to talk the series. We're going to recap the series. Uh, So we'll definitely save that for next, next segment. Gotcha. But... The history that was made, let's just talk the history. LeBron James, 
<laughs> he becomes the first player in NBA history to lead both teams <laughs> in points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks. Like we say, he fills up the stat sheet. Lotto, that's what he does. Mad ink everywhere. He was the unanimous finals MVP. Three finals MVPs, three NBA championships. Yes, three and four sounds a lot better than two and five. LeBron James even said it himself. He said, hey, to myself, I even said, yeah, you have been here seven times and have four or five losses when it's all said and done. Yes, I would probably look back in my career like, look at all these opportunities. So three and four absolutely sounds better than two and five. Again, three chips, four MVPs. All of these things, LeBron, <laughs> yes, sir, these are major keys, and you are now in the room with the pan- – you are in that pantheon. Absolutely. So congratulations again to LeBron. This is supposed to be the era of LeBron James. We are supposed to be living in the King James era, and now it's undisputed <laughs> for sure. Lotto, LeBron James, you have all of the juice right now, fam. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> Seriously, congrats. That felt good. Uh, team of the week. Again, let's get to the weekly awards. The land, I think that's how the kids say it. They swept all the awards. Team of the week, Cleveland Cavaliers, for sure. Ball player of the week, LeBron James. But I cannot go without mentioning Kyrie Irving. Like I said, next segment, we're going to go over the timeline of the entire series. Um, Cannot go without talking about Kyrie Irving, his sidekick, for sure. He deserves his lion's share of the credit. He outplayed Steph in this series, for sure. Steph is no longer Jordan. Yeah, Steph, you got to come off the name, fam. Steph is no longer Jordan around these parts, for sure. The golden child, yes. Jordan, hell no. (laughs) Hell no. (laughs) So props to Kyrie Irving. Again, we'll, we'll talk about it, but Kyrie had some huge, huge, huge moments. We all know what he did in game seven. Uh, Coach of the week, Tyron Lue, absolutely. Laker fam. What I appreciated about Tyron Lue was his conviction in his plan and him willing to stick with what he felt was going to work. He had to deal with the Kevin Love injury. Kevin Love doesn't play in game three. He goes to Richard Jefferson. They blow him out. You know, do you stay with that lineup? How do you handle that? He handled Kevin, the Kevin Love situation. I felt like he handled that well. He kept him dialed in, kept Kevin Love understanding that you can still have an impact on the game if you're not getting shots. You can still rebound if you're standing out there by the three-point line, go crash the glass. And that was evident in game seven. So props for him doing that. He demanded more of LeBron James as this series went along. Told him, hey, you've got to be a little bit more aggressive. Again, we'll talk about it all in the series. So props to him. He took Della Vadova completely out of the lineup and, and interchanged him with Mo Williams. So he pushed all the right buttons. Congrats to Teron Lou, coach of the week for sure. A poetic justice award. I was going to give this to Earl Smith, the third, a.k.a. J.R. Smith, um, but I'm going to give this give it to Cole Ward. I'm going to give it also to Dustin Johnson. Dustin Johnson gets the first one. (laughs) He definitely gets the first one. Dustin Johnson wins the U.S. Open. I do not want to go without mentioning that on this episode. Um, This episode is going to be basketball centric, by the way. So (laughs) football heads, we'll get to football later. But Dustin Johnson wins the U.S. Open. Props to him for all the golf fans out there. I know this kind of got missed in the watch between Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Uh, But coming back from last year, 3-putting 18. 